Hi guys, and um, welcome to another Kings and Queens of England episode. Um, today I am doing Egbert's son Athelwolf. Um, so let's get into it. Um, Athelwolf means noble wolf, and he was born in Aachen in Germany in 795. Um, his parents were Egbert and Redbur, as you know. Um, and his relation to King to Queen to our present Queen is he is the thirty third great grandfather, and he was crowned in Kingston upon Thames, which I think is down south. But if I'm wrong, do tell me in the comments. Um, he married um, two people. Um, one um, was Osber, daughter of Oslac of Hampshire in 833 about which is what the sea means and later he also married Judith daughter of Charles the Bold King of the Franks which I think the French again I mean in the comments below if I'm wrong he had six children and including Athelbold, Athelbert, Athelred and Alfred um, the other two, I think, were girls, which at the time they wouldn't have allowed to be queen. Again, tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. He died in January on January the 13th in Sussex. He was buried at Winchester, and he was succeeded by his eldest son, Athelbald. And he is remembered, however dimly, as a highly religious man who cared about England and the preservation of the church. In some men's eyes, he proved to be intensely religious, cursed with little po little political sense, and with too many able and ambitious sons. But to others, he seemed to have been a religious and unambitious man, for whom engagement in war and politics was an unwelcome consequence of rank. Which basic, which basically means, um, he was very religious and didn't really um, challenge himself much. And he just thought, and he didn't really like war and politics, um, but he just did it because that's what you have to do as a king. But in my opinion, his reign has been underappreciated in modern scholarship, and that he laid the foundations for Alfred's success, and that without him, Alfred wouldn't have done so well. Um, and he found, and he, and he found new as well as traditional answers at the time to problems and coping more effectively with the Scandinavian tax, so that's the Vikings, the most other rulers until Harold II who totally messed up because he got ended up getting us conquered by the Normans. Um so not the best um defence ever. Um his reign is taken up mainly by Viking invasions and repulsions common to all English rulers of that area. Um in 840, he fought at Carhampton um, against 35, di 35 ship groups of Danes, again the Vikings, whose raids had increased considerably. Um, his most notable victory came in eight 851, however, at Acklea, possibly Ockley in Surrey or Oakley in Berkshire, because Acklea doesn't exist anymore, it's changed to something else, but so we don't know where it is now. And here, Athelwolf, um, here at Acklea, um, Athelwolf and his eldest son Athelbald fought against the heathen um, invasion. So heathen is someone who isn't a Jew, Christian or Muslim, so they're a pagan, in historical writings, obviously. Um, and according to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, it was the greatest slaughter of heathen host ever made. Um, so, um, that is basically saying that it was the massive the biggest massacre ever of non-religious people um, in some of the most important events during his reign is um, are as follows 840 in 842, many people died in London and Rochester during the Viking raids and this one is really um, important for the Scots in 844, Kenneth MacAlpine, King of the Scots, conquers the Picts and founds a unified Scotland. So the Picts, I think, are Southern Scotlanders, but again, I'm not sure. Um, in 851, Vikings, Viking forces enter, enter the Thames. Um, 
into the Thames Estuary and march on Canterbury. Um, yeah, so that is everything about Athelwolf. Um, the so next time I will be doing Athelbald, his eldest son. Um, so thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.